Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Micah. Shepherd your people with your staff, the flock that belongs to you, which lives alone in a forest in the mists of a garden land. Let them feed in Bashan and Gilead, as in the days of old. As in the days when you came out of the land of Egypt, show us marvelous things. Who is God like you, pardoning inequity and passing over the transgression of the remnant of your possession? He does not retain his anger forever because he delights in showing clemency. He will again have compassion upon us. He will tread our inequities underfoot. You will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. You will show faithfulness to Jacob and unanswering loyalty to Abraham, as you have sworn to our ancestors from the days of old. The word of the Lord. Thanks. And my Father will love them, and we will come to them. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. While Jesus was still speaking to the crowds, his mother and his brothers were standing outside, wanting to speak to him. But to the one who had told him this, Jesus replied, who is my mother and who are my brothers? And pointing to his disciples, he said, here are my brother and my, and my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. After listening to today's Gospel, and it's one that I'm sure many, many of us have heard a number of times over our lifetime, you might ask, just like I have so many times, why, but why does Jesus seem to ignore his own 
relatives when they pressed in on the crowd to try and get close to him. Really important to remember, and, and, and this sort of stood out for me, that his love, Jesus' love, and respect for his mother and his relatives is, was, is unquestionable. See, Jesus never lost an opportunity to teach his disciples a spiritual lesson and the truth about the kingdom of God. On this occasion, when many were gathered to hear Jesus, he pointed to another, another reality, another higher reality of relationships, namely our relationship with God and with those who belong to God. I trust it's all of us who belong to God and have this relationship with him. Now, you might remember some time back, I talked about relationships and how I continue to discern my relationship. See, as I, and I'll repeat it for you, that God, God first, me second, spouse, if you happen to have one, third, and the others, the families, are next. God first is so key to our relationships because God is life-giving. He is love. So having him first, you can't go wrong at all. And then you can spread out to your, to your partner, your relationship, your, your spouse, whoever it might be in your life. In uh, one of my Bible sources, I read that, and I quote, God offers the greatest of all relationships, such as trust, and there's quite a few. There's trust, affection, commitment, loyalty, kindness, compassion, mercy, strength, protection, and, and the list goes on with all wonderful stuff. These are all qualities that bind people together in mutual love and unity. In short then, God offers us the greatest relationships to involve in union, to be, for us, to be involved in union with him first, such as with heart, with mind, and of course, within us, all of us, that spirit within himself. And why do we, not, why do we need that? Why should we do that? Well, because God is the very author and the source of love. That's not my words. It's from the first letter of St. John, chapter four, chapter 4. Again, you might remember that I shared with you before that uh, the fact that I, I was blessed to having two amazing, amazing parents who did all they could for us, the family. In one occasion, before my mom died, my spiritual director in our dialogue and our conversation, she sensed that, uh, he sensed that I was grieving my mom in a very, very deep way uh, because her passing was imminent. He suggested then I spend more time in strengthening my relationship with God, strengthening a relationship and union, unity and strength with God. And of course, still to continue to love and to support my mom until her last breath, which thank God I did do. My reply to my director was, uh, Father, I do have a relationship with God. I don't think I use the word good. I do have a relationship with God. After all, I said, I'm a priest. <laughs> In his beautiful, simple, and gentle way, he said, I know. But even you, Father, even you, the priest, are not perfect. Even you have room to grow in your relationship with God. I speak of myself only, and I, I, I know I, 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 some of my friends, they also say, sometimes I just go afloat and go astray in my, my prayer time and so on. We all need to grow in our relationship with God. Layperson, whoever it might be, a religious who are watching this mass right now from the residence and where would be in Scarborough, in Toronto, in the west, in the east, wherever it might be in the world. 
our relationship with God is something we continue, we need to work on all day long. You see, although I still miss my parents each day, I try to improve my relationship with my Lord and Savior. Why? Why do I share this with you, the dear friends in Christ? Well, hopefully in the great hope and faith to help you realize that family relationships are very good and very important. However, never neglect your relationship with God and to put him first, always, always. I don't mean, again, to clarify, I don't mean to put your family aside, but you have the capacity to have room for both, family and God, because he'll always be there. Family tends to drift, they move away, they go to heaven sometimes before us, but God was always there for us. So give it a serious try if you can, please. Give it a try and see how rewarding your relationship and your spiritual life with God can become one so powerful, so powerful, so grateful that you are prepared to share that with others. And yes, I'll name drop a few people who you've heard of and maybe some you've met. St. Teresa of Calcutta, Blessed Carlo Acutis, who had no qualms in sharing his love for, the, for Jesus, for the Eucharist, and for Mary. St. John the 23rd, and I'll let you think of someone else who you could probably try to imitate because we know these people's living on earth around the same time we have. And then eventually to relate, to relate totally with Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen.